Hello there, my name's Tim Walter. I'm a house healer and an alternative life coach. I spoke recently with Rory Duff, a geobiologist, about his dowsing experience and how he has come to identify different types of earth energy based on his scientific knowledge. Now we end up in this interview talking about life and death and how is it that life extends beyond this frequency, this existence. Along the way, we talk over possible answers to that big question, what is earth energy? And as a geologist, I, I, I find mapping things pretty easy. I decided to choose an area of, and just map everything in that from the body of the energies. So that, that started a six year project of just mapping uh, all these these energy lines uh, that I could find. That's when I started realizing that some of these lines uh, came into harmony of a certain type. They would all reach one end of their range of movement at exactly the same time in the morning and then exactly the same time in the afternoon. And you could group the different lines with their, with their different frequencies and their harmony time. So you knew that the lines were slightly different. You've uh, classified like five aspects of Earth energy into uh, type one to type five lines, but presumably you've, you, you've got others. That is very much that the energy is based on the uh, inner core, but then there's, there's another whole set of energy energy lines, which I think are more grid-like, which are more surface-like features, which uh, for me are more electromagnetic in nature. Okay, so there's two aspects to this that, that really interest me. One is from the layman's point of view. So the novice, the person that has basically maybe just picked up a wire coat hanger and gone, oh, let me have a go at this. And right, so there's that person that's just interested in finding earth energy. And I go on about the earth energy power centers that we can find in the homes a lot on this on the channel. Now, there's that person who who may or may not be interested in the science and the the how, you know what how is how is this? But then there's also the, the more experienced dowser who actually has been exploring this world, the dowsing world, the subtle energy world, as we would still, as far as I'm concerned, we would call it, for some years. And now what, 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 every, what each of those uh, sets of people has, has always said is, well, what is earth energy? And actually what we're saying is that earth energy actually is formed by many, many different types of forces, types of environments, types of interactions, all of which are perfectly natural. But I can imagine that the, the, the Dowser's point of view now is, well, what am I looking for when I'm looking for Earth energy? What do I ask? How do I find it? How do I know if I'm finding it one particular type of Earth energy line and not another yeah. one? Yeah, and, and it's interesting. I think you, you do need to be familiar with what you're looking for. Um, and you need to be very precise with your questioning. Uh, as I mentioned before, the feedback is important. Um, it, one of the first things I do when I teach people to DAOs is, is, uh, is I show people how easy it is to make it all up. Right. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you, you, you take a rod, you need to, to create this conscious rod control, getting backwards and forwards. It's a sort of signaling system. And when you know how to make it up, then you'll know when you're not making it up. Um, but one of the ways to, to start uh, is to familiarize yourself with an environment where you know you are. So if you want to look for water, you start where you're, you're actually on top of water, underground. And, and your subconscious knows it's there because your subconscious, your, your body has a natural field, a vibrational field, an electromagnetic field, and, and even a gravitational field. And, and, and the water body underground will have that same vibrational field and, and electromagnetic field, where your subconscious can detect whether it's there or not. So your communication is between consciousness and, and the subconscious. So you say, look, I know it's here, just remember it's here. So that when I ask you again, and I go somewhere else, and I don't know where it is, just move the rod so when it does, Okay, so, so you do need to build up the familiarity. And one of the, one of the things that I found very early on when I was looking for these lines was that uh, I didn't know these are the lines. Yeah. I didn't have a familiarity with these other lines until I actually taught other people. I taught one chap uh, in Bath to find the, this particular type three line around this church. And he said to me, well, what's this one over here? And I'm thinking, my goodness, I didn't know. But then, yeah, he found one. So we tracked that line and it ran through the front part of his house. Right. He was familiar with that frequency. Yeah. And, and, and this led us this, this, that we are familiar with the frequencies that, that we are aware, whether we work or, 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 or live on them. 
And, and here you begin to see a really important uh, play uh, with regards to our own bodies and these different frequencies of energy lines because some of them, I mean, it, it's, it's natural. We've evolved with all these different types of frequencies in this planet, but we weren't many of us back in the old days. Now there's billions of us and we're all cramped into these places. And, and whereas intuition in the past would say, well, we, we shouldn't perhaps live in these places. In fact, there's an old uh, American, uh, Chinese emperor that said, you know, you shouldn't build a house until the diviners have checked the place first, you know, because of the, because of the earth demons and things like that. So you, we're now in this situation, and I know this is a subject that, that's dear to your heart with regards to where we live and, and the frequencies in, in these houses and, and how our bodies interact with certain frequencies over a longer period of time and it's very clear that the two particular types of frequencies that i've come across really don't sit well with quite a few people and one of those are the the bank of great intersections uh, and the other are things called moon phase lines they're just frequencies which don't seem to lead to good health in fact they can, can cause uh, energy blockages and that that leads to chronic fatigue chronic pain and they can even lead to more disastrous things if you live them for a long time, which is uh, cancers and things like that. And there's, I mean, Germany seems to be well ahead of us. They, they have uh, oncologists that tell their patients not even to go home because they know that they know the streets where, 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 there's, where there's some really bad. So, so I mean, I know you, you're talking about healing in, in, in your own home and, and, and the importance of people to know what energies there are. Now you need to, to, to to get your home checked out or learn how to dance and, and di differentiate between these energies and uh, or, or just tune into an awareness and listen to your intuition people people buy their houses by getting a feeling well you've got to ask where did that feeling come from you know yeah yeah, quite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, i've been interesting you you are a, a scientist and you've always come at all of this from a scientific perspective but you, you, I guess it was discovering, as you said before, discovering Steiner's work that really helped you kind of shift uh, perspective and be able to allow some of that intuitive uh, self-experience into your perception of reality. You do raise an interesting question from the point of view of how we learn and where we learn from. And, and, and we're, we're presented with huge numbers of choices in our life as to what we read, what we do, uh, what we choose to study. Um, and, and often that, that's an individual consciousness, ego driven uh, or, or aspect to making decisions. The difference here is what we want perhaps to know and do compared to what we need to, to know and do. And the interesting thing was that Steiner begins to explore this whole relationship between uh, the consciousness, subconscious mind and the super sensible world. And what he was discovering, it, it, you can discover the same with the, your own interaction between dowsing between the consciousness, subconscious mind. You, you have to, for instance, when you move into that aware state, completely divorce your mind from all desire to know something specific. So you may ask a question, you may have curiosity, but you have to leave that curiosity completely aside in the aware state because that, that, that's, that's bringing your individual consciousness into, into that subconscious and that's, that's wrong. So you've got to go into that complete uncertainty, the, just the desire to know the truth. And this is exactly what Steiner used to teach. But to just, just to go one further, then Jung teaches you about synchronicity and, and the importance of, of two separate events that occur within a short space of time and yet they're a causally connected and he came to think that this was this was a very much a spiritual direction to help you find out what you need to be doing in life and, and what you need to be doing or learning and understanding is something also that the, 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 the dowsing will teach you as well as studying Jung and, and Steiner but, but perhaps the greatest gift that we were given was the understanding of, of uh the true nature of earth energy lines when it comes to uh, the, the old symbolism of the past. And, and the Gnostic Gospels talked about the Garden of Eden and the serpent in the Garden of Eden as being the instructor, the teacher. And in, completely in opposite to the religious uh, uh, people who changed the, the, the directions of some of these teachings uh, into the serpent being evil. And this tree of knowledge, uh, which is really the axis mundi, which 
the axis of the mound is the old, old Egyptian interpretation of axis mundi. It's not axis of the world, axis of the mound. And this is where the tree of life exists. And this is exactly the same as nodes, where you have these, these energy line intersections. You, you, you find that the, the earth energies are symbolized universally as serpents or dragons. They are the great teachers. If you just allow yourself to connect with these energies at, at these sacred sites and allow them to give you the information you need, when you meditate on them, you find out what you need to be doing in life rather than what you should be, what you would like to be doing. That, that that's probably the message Steiner was trying to talk to us about, and, and what what Jung has been discovering with his Red Book work. That's a large part of my my work at the moment. Is is is, uh, is doing. Um, group discussions with people going through uh, the likes of Jung, Jung and, and Goethe and what they were discovering about the, the geobiology and how it connects with consciousness. Uh, right, so so you're really now connecting people uh, to the earth uh, as part of their realities uh, to understand the significance of the, the, the big picture, the picture in which we all exist. No. My, my, goal, my goal right now is, is, is just something we're just beginning the sacred network project where we're identifying the key sites in Europe and America uh, for people to gather around in, in groups uh, and in group meditation. We're moving, we think, into this, into this from individual consciousness to group consciousness. And we need, we need groups gathering and multi-faith groups around sacred energetic sites to be literally guided by, by the information that comes through as a group at these sites to do what we need to be doing in Wilna. And th this is basically because at this time we're, we're in this amazing uh, experience of being alive and being aware, but uh, in this transition to group consciousness, we need to be aware of the power of our own choice and individual choices and collective choices in order to shift and break the patterns of the past. But there's a, there's a bit more to that concept of group consciousness and working in groups what, what we've kind of discovered again through uh, not arranging too much ourselves but allowing things to unfold when you arrange to have a, a, a group meditation people seem to pop up and make the right numbers when you start looking at a, a really effective group of people they're all different mm -hmm. there is there is nothing that there is an individualness that we need to learn to respect amongst each yeah. other because each of us will have talents and skills and abilities that the rest of the group need and it's overcoming our differences that's the real skill uh, and importance when, when we start working in groups and, and that that's exciting because of the, obviously what that, what that can then mean it is it's absolutely and that's that's fundamental to the, this this process of change that we're in is recognizing yeah. and celebrating each individual person and therefore and as you say that's about Putting that ego to one side and just accepting what we what we have. Well, I don't think I'm the first person to say that by any means. <laughs> yes. Hey, yeah. we're learning. You know, this is a learning opportunity. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Or have have you looked into the uh, what I call the Earth Energy Centres in our own home? Not what I call. It's, it's you know this is basic Hamish Miller stuff. You know, Hamish would just love. Uh, he would just delight in showing anybody that the Earth Energy Power Center in his living room would just acknowledge its presence and say hi to the universe through that process. The universe inner and outer, I mean. Do you have any view about that? What, what, what these little, these tiny little power centers are, these tiny little vortices, that sometimes not so tiny, that we can experience in our own homes? The, the thing about our homes is that they're not always the same as everybody else's. The, the, when we get down to the Hartman Curry lines, uh, grid lines and the Banker grid lines, the, these are pretty uh, uniform all over the area. Um, however, they have grid densities. You, they, sometimes the, the density of, of, of a grid is much tighter and sometimes it's further apart. And, and there's, so you, you're looking, depending on where you are in your house, there's going to be a different sort of flavor and energy feel to it. So, and, um, so you, you don't have one particular solution for every single house in that sense. You don't have one particular feeling you're always going to feel in, in one house. So you've got to go in there and energetic, energetically look at, at what's going on in a particular house. Because next door might be slightly different. Yeah, and, and absolutely. Yeah, because in fact, I mean, and that's the angle that I tend to come at it all from. And, and bearing in mind that your comment earlier on about, yes, it's very, very easy to mis mislead yourself when you're dousing. 
So you you know, if I ask, if I if I suggest to somebody or as, as I do to viewers, um, go and find the most positive and beneficial earth energy center in your home. That's not really giving them a lot to go on. But what I'm trusting in is position and their own relationship to to their spiritual aspect, if if you like. I mean, the, the words and the labels become you know. No, I mean, you 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 do have to get people to look at it intuitively, uh, uh, because there are so many energy relationships between all objects of matter. For, for instance, just recently there was a person saying that they, they were having trouble with with with. Uh, with, with coping with the energies in their property and, and I was having trouble finding out what the issue was and <laughs> eventually it was that she had a bag of crystals which she kept all the crystals right. in a bag yeah and you think, well, well hang on you, you just because it's in a bag it doesn't mean to say it's not taking an effect anywhere so right. you've got right. all these different crystals in here doing all goodness knows what's with, with them because I'm not I mean although I'm a geologist I'm not a crystal expert yeah. the point of view of what it does energetically but it's it's a it, it's a massive influence where, where that bag is kept yeah. So there's so many different variables. You have to trust intuition. Simply picking up a dowsing rod can open a, a person to, you know, once they open that a door and step through it, there's this incredible change of experience that is possible. And people really don't understand. Nobody as a dowser, even the first time that you doused, you probably had no idea what you were opening yourself up to. Fundamentally opens a person to their real self, to the possibility of their real self. And that real self is very different to actually what we've been educated to believe we are. It's a perfect start to a journey, I think. And, and, um, and it teaches you all along the time. Uh, even, even the people you meet, you know, they, they, they are incredibly experienced in certain fields. And, and I took a, a group of uh, shaman, uh, they were practicing, they were, they were developing their skills. And I was asked to teach them to do the dowsing around Bath. I, I do all my dowsing training for people in, in the city of Bath because I've mapped every single energy line in Bath, in this area of Bath. So it provides instant feedback. So if they pick something up, they say, yeah, here you are. That's what you picked up on the map. That's the direction. That's the type. And they think, oh, I actually picked something up, which someone other, other people have picked up. But, but these, these, these people, uh, these shamans, just say, well, they, we don't need rods. And, and they, they, they put their rods down and they were now feeling these yeah. different frequencies in different parts of their body and giving it different colors. Yeah. So that there, there are other ways to begin to develop. And the rod, it becomes your crutch in the end. If you constantly have the pendulum or the rod and, and don't push and explore. Uh, but so you're, you're, you're constantly working towards understanding. And, and what I love about the teaching dowsing is I say, look, I don't want you to do what I'm doing. You know, that's pointless. You know, this is your vehicle to then discover where, where you're heading with this. And so you, you, you feel you're sending everybody off on a, on a wonderful journey for, for them to, to explore. Um, and there's just so much more to do and discover. It's like a whole field of, of so I mean I call it geobiology which is the study of how the earth affects life uh, and and it's a, it's a word they use abroad a lot Geo, and from France they use uh, geobiology as a, as, as a description and it's a bit more than just dowsing because it's a it's a scientific a aspect to it and then dowsing is just a, a great tool to, to use with it um, but that, that as a science is, is opening up massively and, and we need more people doing it there's also the, the movement in science, uh, which which seems to be gathering ground, and you've you've really touched on it already today. Which is um, this whole movement towards shifting from the standard model over to resonance science, science that's based on resonances of of everything. Well, um, the whole narrative is collapsing. Um, they, they've spent uh, billions on trying to find dark matter. Uh, and, and failed miserably, and this is what they desperately need to support their uh, their relativity uh, theories. Uh, with, where, and and um, the, the new kid on the block is definitely plasma cosmology and, and the electric universe theory, and this is explaining so much more. Uh, and then Ron's theories uh, underpin that actually with regards to um, creation. And, and, uh, and one, 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 I want to mention one other thing, which is good good to get your head around, is that. Uh, Every bit of matter that we have here for, is, is you get down to the small scale, the atoms and, and the quarks and the muons, there's nothing solid in it. It's just energy. So in everything you see around it, we, we can't put our hand through our, our sofa because that's just a, a electrical reactions between electrons and protons and all those sort of things. But it's not real. 
it's just a bundle of energy. And what Ron's theory talks about is that, that well, just like we have a, a, a range of, of vision and a range of hearing, we have a range of feeling. And, and, and that's a matter frequency range. And yet all these other energy worlds exist on different frequencies of matter. And our mind uh, moves between these matter frequencies. So you don't need multiples of dimensions. You can, three, three dimensions is fine. So you don't need any more because all these other dimensions, they're actually different matter frequency worlds within the same area as us. And our mind tunes into this frequency and that's what it makes it, it gives us the illusion it's real, the Maya, the illusion that this is all real, but it's not, as soon as we get over our heads, that actually this is just an illusion we're living in. And the only real thing, if you like, is our mind. Mm -hmm living in this particular frequency system and when our, when our mind uh, doesn't need the body anymore or the body expires it, it moves over to matter frequency system and you begin to start uh, looking at the, the, what is common to all life is growth and then you think well that should, that's the purpose of life is to grow and the ways you learn to grow physically mentally uh, emotionally and spiritually and, and that is the, the kind of like prime directive in life and that's what we have to do um, so to, to get, getting your head around the fact that this is not real, that's a really important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, it's, it, you really threw me when you said that those, those different frequencies are not different dimensions. Because I've always yeah. thought of them as dimensions. So what would, how would you classify dimensions? Well, the problem with dimensions, and you've got to look at where it came from. And, 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 and all these extra dimensions were added because of the problem between them trying to connect up everything on the small scale, which is quantum mechanics, with all this random and indeterminate movement, with everything on the large classical scale, which relativity is supposedly explaining, uh, it, it was ordered and, and patterned. And they're trying to combine these two theories into a grand theory of quantum gravity. But the only way they could begin to do this mathematically was to resort to uh, using a lot more variables in their equations, when each variable required another uh, dimension and another dimension. It's only when you have this multi-dimensional world that you can begin to get something vaguely that models uh, something for, that keeps their relativity theory. And the reason they had to keep relativity theory, because even Einstein on his 70th birthday said he didn't think it was down to the test of time, is because it, it demands there is no background medium. Yeah. Because yeah. everything in relativity moves in, in, in relative motion to something else whereas in if you have an ether or a background that everything moves relative to the background and they had to do away with ether and the background media which was totally accepted the giants like Nikola Tesla didn't like relative at all he would he was absolutely accepting ether and, and he he was finding ways to tap into this ether to get limitless and endless energy and that was what scared the big bankers of this world they wanted to control the money, they needed to control the power, the energy. And so everything was done to, to promote relativity and to, and to stop any investigation into the ether. Right, yeah. And, and the ether is coming back with a vengeance now. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it never went away, did it? I mean, that's the point, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Ron talks about it not just as the ether, but he calls it the intelligent ether, the yeah. ether. And that's existing on the subquantum level. But, but th that's where it, all these dimensions came from, because it required them to try and combine the, the quantum theory with the uh, relativity theory. But we don't need relativity theory. Really what you're saying then in that, in that uh, concept is that, as you said, when we, when we die uh, and the physical body moves on and the awareness remains present, then actually it's just shifting frequency. This is as simple as that. There's probably more to it than just that with regards to resonance and vibration and heart resonance and all these things and how you shift on. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a huge suppression on the evidence for survival after death. They, they, they just don't want you to know about it. They, they need you to keep, keep you in fear of death. Fear of death uh, is what suppresses people. In fact, there's an old expression by Karl Marx, would you believe, that you know, freedom from the fear of death is the key that unlocks humanity's chains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, oh, thank you. Thank you for that as a, as a, as a final quote. That's brilliant. Who would have thought that was Karl Marx? But yeah. of course, absolutely, but you know, incredibly appropriate. And it also brings us just neatly back around to Hamish Miller um, because he, you know, with his near-death experience, that was his 
uh, the big change for him. Fortunately, most of us don't have to go through that sort of experience. Um, your experience, life change experience, is ongoing, as is mine, as is most of those who are watching. Um, Rory, thank you so much for spending the time and sharing your knowledge. Uh, it's been absolutely fascinating. Uh, thank you. Maybe at some point in the future you'll come back again and we can do some more um, because it's 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 brilliant to, to get your perspective on things. Really good. That's right. Very kind of you, Tim, and thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you.